Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stefan Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And welcome to another happy hour. And we are changing it up a little bit. I feel like this is us celebrating the ridiculous 90 degrees in Atlanta, which actually feels like 100 and something in Atlanta because of, you know, humidity. And also, I'm in my closet with like a ring light. It is so hot. It It is so hot. Yeah, I am not. And I'm still sweating from my boobies. So (laughs) I don't know if that tells you anything other than it's hot around here, y'all. It is. Oh, it is. I (laughs) I know one of my, uh, back when I used to tweet, one of the tweets that I ever tweeted that got the most was, uh, the most likes was, (laughs) <laughs> I used to put underwear in my freezer. Oh, yeah. And you put them on. And for running, it was great. But also just sitting in, in this closet. And one time I forgot to take the underwear out and I had company over and they opened the freezer. <laughs> so it's amazing. In there. <laughs> who was it? I need to know who it is. You can tell me, you can tell me off mic because I'm I, I just <laughs> like imagining who it was. It was my friend Redheaded Katie who's been on the show. Okay. Okay. So her reaction wasn't, I was honestly thinking like Ramsey or Dylan. Yes. Oh, I wish. And the reaction they would have. Even the producer, uh, old producer Andrew, but I know he doesn't come over like that. But, you know, in my head or Lyle from ads. Mm. Oh my God. That would have been phenomenal. Anyway. Yeah. (laughs) But I know that Redheaded Katie, whom we love, Probably enjoyed every moment of it. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's still kind of a strange thing to explain to somebody. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Even to me, I'd have been like, why? <laughs> like, I would have, that would have been my immediate reaction. Yeah. Um, but yes, it is hot here. So we decided we would take a take. Yeah, I said it. Okay. Uh, and do Sminty makes a cocktail. Yes. Summer edition. Summer edition. Is it summer? Girl, it's yes. not yet. Well, it feels like it, so it's close enough. <laughs> Just go with me on this one. Yeah, and we have been trying to get a Sminty, an official Sminty cocktail for a long time. So again, listeners, if you have any ideas on that, yes. Yes. we would love to hear them because this is was sort of us being like, I tried to figure out what Samantha might like and I feel like you tried to figure out what I might like, which is very, yes. I'm glad. Yes. Uh, I think it worked out, but I would love to get kind of a group effort cocktail. Oh. Mm-hmm. I feel like we need to make it a small book. Ooh, a cocktail book. Yes, okay. minty cocktail book. I I see things in the future of things <laughs> happening here. No, just me? Okay, cool. I cool, see cool. things in the future, she I says. see new things in the horizon for us. And yeah, so I'm going to take a stab at a cocktail. Oh. And it is based on a different cocktail that I saw. I think it's called the Basil uh, Lime Cooler. Mm -hmm. But I made a few plays. I did take from their recipe, um, if y'all want it, let me know, on how to do basil syrup. Syrup? Syrup? How do you say it? I like how I, because I'm always hung up, I say basil, but I feel like people make fun of me. So I I like how you got hung up on syrup. Yeah. And I I I get hung up on basil. Basil syrup. Say either. Syrups. Syrups. Anyway, yeah, (laughs) y'all let me know. But yeah, so we did our own rendition of basil. Uh, simple syrup. And I took to that and added um, some lime juice, as it calls for, some gin, because apparently the cooler had vodka. And as much as I like vodka, I love gin more. And to Mm -hmm. me, gin and basil, gin and herbs in itself just hits. It hits for me. Um, So I took that, the gin, and then I also took, uh, I decided because strawberries are in season right now, that I wanted to take a strawberry, muddle it up. I took half of one so it wouldn't overwhelm and muddle it up and then added some seltzer water. And for mine, which is in a cocktail glass, Annie, you see this, it has yeah. a basil flower because we have basil plants and some of them have sprouted into flowers, which is apparently not great, but it's okay. But it's pretty and it smells nice and I add it as my garnish and it's very pink. For mine. It is. It is very, very pretty. So the original impetus for this idea was quite funny because uh, Samantha presented it to me as 
why don't you make a cocktail? And I was like, it's your cocktail hour. <laughs> You're trying to give me more work. Um, but we <laughs> exchanged <laughs> we exchanged recipes, so you'll you'll get mine uh, later. But uh, it was very it was very funny to me because I was like, here are my pun ideas for a title. You haven't told me what you uh, have named this drink. Yes. So I thought if you added more of the red, but you didn't re- add any strawberries because that's optional. I wanted mm-hmm. I love fruit uh, and seasonal fruit muddled into things. That's kind of my jam. Mm. obviously. Um, So I was thinking that it was going to be redder than what it is. I was like, oh, let's be dark and call it the blood of my enemies. But I'm like, it's actually really pretty pink and it has a flower in it now. Like I I definitely have a flower in this. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to change this somehow. So I don't know now. I think one of the original ideas is that we were going to title each other's drink after tasting it. Oh, I well, I don't remember that. I feel like you might I, be well, trying to pull a fast no, one. No, <laughs> no, I did because I was like, "Oh no, I'm not going to be able to name Annie's." But you named them before I could get to it, so I was like, "Oh, okay, I'll do." <laughs> that was, it was the original idea that we would name each other's based on you know what we made. Mm. But you are, of course, ten oh. steps ahead of me. You would never oh. allow me to try to pun. Your drinks, I know. <laughs> but I'm trying to figure it out because I'm like, well, do I want to name it something pretty like sunsets in the Decatur skies? Because I am in Decatur now and I did yeah. see this. Or sunset at the end of the world because it feels like the end of the world. Or sunset on a hot night. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Okay. I mean... Or it could be Sam's peace of mind. Cheers. I like that. I like that. Uh, cheers. I. It's very nice. It's very refreshing. Another funny kind of differentiation between Samantha and I came clear during this because I I gave her three recipes to consider, and one of them had a jalapeno simple syrup idea, but I was mm-hmm. like, I'll never make the simple syrup. But then you sent yours. And it was and like, so you must make the simple syrup. Yes. Yeah, which I did, and it was so easy. Um, but I did not I did not muddle nor shake it together. I just gave it okay. a vigorous swirl with my a straw, fine. and I have no fruit. Uh, yeah. but it's very lovely nonetheless. Yeah. So yours is straight lime and basil, so it's a different taste. So based on what you made, what would you name it? Mm. It would be something either related to Yavin 4 what? or Endor. Okay, how about we try not to do a Star Wars one no. on this one? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> if it's very important to you, I can come no. up with something non-Star Wars related. But it will be tough. <laughs> <laughs> it will be very hard for me. Oh, you can. You could, I would say yes, probably indoor since it is the foresty mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the problem is when we get to mine, you'll see there's already conflicting name. Yes, <laughs> with one of mine. So yes, we have to weigh this out. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. When it comes to summertime and refreshments, is there a memory that you have or something that you always go to as a favorite moment in knowing that the season has arrived or this is the moment of relaxation or vacationing? I'm glad you asked that because actually I've been thinking about it lately. When I was a kid, um, I was very, very fortunate because my grandparents have a beach house that we could go to during the summer. And I used to always, we were allowed to, uh, me and my two brothers were allowed to pick one pint of ice cream each. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, even though it wasn't my favorite ice cream or anything, uh, I would always get Rocky Road. Huh. And I had the strongest craving for it lately. I think it's because I think it means I'm stressed and I'm like reaching out to some... Mm-hmm. It was a point of comfort for me when I was a kid. And I also, those like um, ice pops... 
that were in, yeah. uh, like, in the, the plastic. plastic. Yes. And I didn't even like those either. Like, I think it was just that they were cold and I didn't get them any other time. Right. So that was it when I was a kid and s'mores. Um, s'mores for sure. Now, when I, uh, my mom and I used to, for like three years, I commuted three hours a day uh, to work and I lived with my parents. Um, and my mom and I, when I would get home, I'd get home around 4 p.m. And we would walk six miles every day, three years. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, and we would always, during the summer, because it's so hot, uh, we would make these, uh, we would freeze chunks of watermelon and just blend that and drink that straight and then have BLTs with fresh tomatoes. And it oh, was that's so amazing. Good. That's <laughs> it was amazing. So good. <laughs> My mouth just started immediately watering yeah. when you got that fresh tomatoes. Wow. Yeah. So I've been craving that too. And it's kind of, I don't know that this is necessarily really a summer food, but I crave it during the summer. I'm just all of a sudden like, I have to have a BLT <laughs> and some watermelon. Yeah. No, tomatoes are definitely a seasonal thing, and summer is it. I love fresh tomatoes. I am that one who used to eat it like apples with a little bit of salt in the story. Uh, To the point that uh, it was too much acid. But yeah, I love that memory because obviously in the South, tomatoes are very important. And we talk about tomato sandwiches in general. Like I would eat white bread with tomatoes, point blank. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know Bitter Southerner, like that's one of their... Uh, t-shirts, I believe. Uh, no mayo, because I hate it with a passion. I hate <laughs> it with a passion. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think those that's very summary. And the push pops that you're talking about, yeah, I definitely have the memories. They were cheap, they were easy, and they were a treat for all of us. And it, even though it had sugar, it wasn't like tons of sugar. So it, it felt nice. And I could tell when I was a nanny, this was a smart idea to get the kids to cool down, stay outside, and then enjoy something that's a little different and accessible. So it was really nice. Um, for me growing up, I did not have a beach house. However, my uncle at the time was the manager of the local city pool. So I could go every day by like, and I could go by myself because I, I knew all the lifeguards at that point. Um, and I would just spend all day there lo- going through all my energy. They would give me like $5 for snacks. And of course, you know, the snacks were like chips, little bags of chips mm-hmm. for 50 cents or whatever. And I would always get barbecue chips. And as an adult, after swimming, and I, when I say swimming, it was definitely not the same level of kids where they dive and jump and all of that. I just now sit in it. <laughs> I also crave barbecue chips. And that is associated to summer for me. And I will actually crave it. Like I'm not even trying to figure out why. And I've heard a few people tell me they do the same thing. So I don't know if that's a chemical thing, any mm. savor thing. Is this a, is this a <laughs> chemical thing? I don't know. But that mm-hmm. needing that salt to replenish maybe, I don't yeah. know. But always that, it's either a Mountain Dew mm. or a Sprite. Like that yeah. is the drink of the summer for us growing up. And my parents are teetotalers, so we definitely did not have alcohol or anything. Uh, getting older, you know, trying to figure out what I want, I still crave those uh, barbecue chips. I'm like, I want yeah. that cheap Lay's barbecue chips today while I'm swimming. Um, but yeah, I, th- I find that interesting that we have those core memories as children. And again, we've talked about this a lot, and I've talked about wanting to do shows based on uh, my experience as a kid uh, and being triggered and traumatized sometimes by food. But that is that memory of like having that moment of this is associated with this. Of course, seasonal fruits, that makes sense. Like, but that's logistical. Ice mm-hmm. versus hot. All of that makes a lot more sense. But I, I, I find that very comforting that that is almost just universal for everyone. Yeah, yeah. And I think especially as a kid, I would love to hear from other people because like weather-wise, the summer is not my favorite. But when I was a kid, it was my favorite because it meant I didn't have school. <laughs> and right, vacation. Exactly. And it did have a lot of those sort of, to, it felt like special foods. Uh, that you just got during the summer. Um, and when, like, again, if you're lucky enough to to go to a pool or go to a beach or whatever, and you get so tired and you'd be in the heat, you'd wear yourself out, and then you have a hamburger, and it's the best thing you've ever had, even right. though it's just a hamburger that you've right. had throughout the year. But it tastes so good. Yeah. There's a whole different <sighs> thing. 
Uh, yeah, let us know what your favorite summer cocktail is, how you celebrate, what we should try, any of the uh, non-alcoholic beverages and craft beverages. We would love to hear from you. Your childhood memories, we bask in your stories. We do. <laughs> Just like we <laughs> bask in the sun of the summer or hide from it because it's so hot. Um, yes, yeah, so we would love to hear from you. Uh, cheers, as always. Cheers. Thanks for joining us for these happy hours. And you can email us. Uh, our email is stephaniamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at momstuffpodcast or on Instagram at stuff I never told you. Thanks, as always, to our super producer, Christina. Thank you, Christina. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.